Okay, uh, there's the Ainsley circuit, and uh, I'm uh, showing it with the light bulb as a load. The light bulb is about 110 microhenries. Most people are probably using inductive loads that are way too high. Uh, loads like uh, this or this are they're way up into the tens of uh, millihenries, and um, that's uh, way too much. But it'll work fine with those loads. Uh, but it's just not what she specified. Okay, and now we're uh, we're using the function generator to make a short duty cycle and that short duty cycle is going into the Ainsley circuit um, okay and then I've got the two I've got uh, the ability to switch between MOSFETs that's a, a slide switch I can select either the 1548 or the IRF PG50 there by simply flicking this slide switch like that okay and uh, there is the, the uh, input current and the output pulse uh, of the Ainsley circuit monitored at her uh, points uh, A and B in the uh, diagram in the EIT or IET paper, whichever it is. The pulse generator, whatever it is, turns the load on for a short period of time. Uh, the load state, whether it's conducting or not, follows the pulse that you're putting in exactly. But And, and so does the, uh, the load point A or alternatively the MOSFET drain. The MOSFET drain is high when the load is off and it drops down a little bit when the load comes on and then it comes back up. Okay, uh, and on this analog scope, and this is what I want to show, on the analog scope uh, you can see a definite kind of a squarish pulse in there and if you change the time base, uh, sorry, if you change the time base you can even sort of feel like you're resolving features in that pulse. Turn off the other trays. Uh, sorry, there we go. See there? And one of the features, of course, is this nice inductive ring down on that edge. Uh, but this voltage drop here may actually be an illusion uh, of my analog oscilloscope and the leads. Because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that actual probe right out of the channel here, boing, and I'm going to move it right on over here to the LaCroix uh, 9370 scope. And I'm just going to plug it in like that and I've got that channel grounded now so uh, let's see here coupling and DC 1 mega ohm okay so now you can see the spikes there but there's no drop of the voltage uh, in between right let me let's see, display turn the grid intensity down a little bit Okay, so you're seeing some nice spikes on that signal, but you don't see that drop in the uh, in the voltage there, uh, and that might be what's confusing people. Okay, uh, a lot of people are using these digital scopes, uh, and I use an analog scope or two of them a lot of the time for some of my determinations. So I can see things that other people might not be able to see. And in fact, the characteristics of the oscilloscope um, show me stuff that's interesting that you might not see on a digital oscilloscope. Okay, on the digital oscilloscope, you're really emphasizing these spikes, and it's actually probably true that the voltage drop in between the spikes is really insignificant, as people have been telling you. But only on now because we're running the short duty cycle in the in-between time between those spikes, and if I lengthen the duty cycle make the bulb go brighter, the distance between those spikes grows. You see that? So that's the pulse width there on that line. And the um, I've actually got the flukoscope, the Fluke 199 up here monitoring that same signal. And uh, as you can see, actually they're both hooked up to the same point. This is the Fluke's probe, point A. This is the uh, 
LaCroix probe right now, okay? So we're using the Fluke uh, 199 scope meter and you can see that it's showing those spikes and the reason that the spikes are flipping around like that boing, 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 is because I have the trigger level set at, a, at the wrong place. It's way outside the range that the, the spikes are indicating. So I'm going to move the trigger up. In fact, we should probably trigger on the positive part of the pulse just like the other scopes are. Okay. So there, now you're getting a little bit bigger, better triggering. You can see that the uh, the peaks stay in the same place along the time axis. You can also see that the amplitude of the peaks is fluctuating. That's an illusion caused by the interaction between the sampling rate of the oscilloscope and the frequency of the pulse. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is increase the time base. Actually, let's do it on the LaCroix first. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, change the times per division so that we can get and see that inductive ring down at the second or the trailing edge of that spike. Uh, okay, you see that? That's a nice inductive ring down. Now we'll go up and do the same thing for the fluke. We're going to look at this portion of that spike. Okay.